good good morning to you all and thank you for joining us welcome to another frame devotional the place where your personal ministry is our passion we continue with a series of looking at wisdom from the mouths of children sometimes the longing for the things of life are so intense that we don't pay much attention to the source of the gifts but that is really playing a silly game and as the saying goes, if you play silly games, you should expect to win silly prizes. Who would expect to receive a good gift from an enemy? Good things don't come from evil sources. Jesus himself warns us about this when he tells us in John chapter 10 verse 10 that the enemy comes to kill and to destroy. But he, Christ, has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I am so excited to share with you a lesson that my nephew at the age of five taught me. Profound it was, though at first I didn't quite get it. Curtis had a nightly routine, and this nightly routine included having a warm drink, which was what, something called Milo, which is a kind of chocolatey, powdery thing that's made into a drink. It had to be done a particular way. The temperature had to be right. There couldn't be any sediments left from the Milo in the cup. The cup had better not be damp, much less wet. And God forbid, if he ever saw you tasting from his cup, that would be it. Only two persons really made his drink, his mother and his grandmother. And sometimes I would venture to try, but I didn't push my luck too often. This particular evening, his mother was preoccupied with something really important, and he sat quietly waiting for his drink. His older brother decided to step in and help, and he made the drink. But I noticed that Curtis wasn't even touching it. He didn't even look at it. So I asked his brother, what's wrong with the drink? Before he could respond, Curtis's terse response was, are you mother? None of us quite understood what he was saying. But as he repeated it, I got it. In his little five-year-old mind, the role of making his drink belonged to mother. And his brother was not a mother. It wasn't mommy and it wasn't grandmother. It seems to me that the wise man Solomon when he spoke about the need to be careful of desiring the gifts from wealthy people who are not your friends ought to be something we stay away from. He tells us that if we're not careful, that we will have to swallow back the words of thanks that we give them when we receive these gifts because the gifts come from an evil place. Proverbs 23 verses 6 to 8. This is solid warning, but oh, how I wish that I understood this lesson way back in my life. I had taken gifts I had no business taking because I didn't understand or didn't spend the time to consider the source of the gifts. I know the scripture says in the multitude of counsel, there's wisdom or there's safety, but it had better be godly counsels. Too often, we go for the multitude, but not the classification of godly counsel. And when we do this, we're accepting gifts from people who are not mother, who have no capacity, no morality, no spirituality on which to stand when they give us these gifts. And oh, how we suffer sometimes and pay a really high price for this. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 26 tells us the godly gives good advice to their friends, but the wicked lead them astray. A clear indication that advice also comes from the wicked. So it is up to us to identify the source of the gifts and determine that some of them we have no business accepting. There is one enemy whose passion and mission is to destroy us. 
and he holds out these inviting cups of warm Milo at the time when we really need that evening drink. But we are cautioned to be careful about the bearers of gifts, especially when we don't know who the source is. In Philippians 4 verse 19, God takes the time to remind us that he shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. And we know by now that God will not go bankrupt. He will not run out of resources to supply your needs. So wait for it. Wait for him. Curtis had faith in who was supposed to make his drink. And he was prepared to wait. He would not accept it from another source, though I'm sure it would have been fine, but for him in his five-year-old mind, he had already determined who the provider of his needs would be, and it was not Big Brother. All that we as Christians would be this firm about who the provider of our needs are supposed to be. Oh, that we would be this certain, this concrete, and this stubborn about who we receive gifts from. And then the enemy would have much less of a hold on our lives. Let us remember, God says, don't be anxious for anything. It doesn't matter if you've waited a long time. Still wait, because the only good source, as the scripture reminds us, all good and perfect gifts are from God. So if it isn't coming from God, from godly source, if you have to compromise to get it, you already know that it is not good and it is not perfect because the scripture says that all good and perfect gifts are from God. And so I challenge you today as you step into this new day, Remember to shun the gifts that come from sources that are not godly. Remember to exclude from your lives the gifts of guilt and hopelessness and sadness and frustration and discontentment. Ask God to keep you away from opening these gifts that are of impatience, that are of jealousy, that are of anger and bitterness and wait until mother makes that cup of tea that you so badly need. The next time the enemy holds out anything to you, ask the question to yourself. Say it out loud. Are you mother? And you know if it isn't, you do not touch those gifts. Let us pray. Righteous eternal God, the profound and simple lessons that we learn from children are simply amazing. So many times, Lord, I confess in my life that I've allowed myself to receive and to embrace gifts that I had no business even considering. And God, I ask your forgiveness and I thank you for your grace and your mercy that kept me in those moments so the Trojan horse was not able to destroy me. It's all because of your goodness. But Father, we declare today that we will not accept gifts from strangers. We will not accept our cup of tea from anyone who is not mother. We have tried and tested you, God, and we know you are faithful, that you're good, and we know that all good and perfect gifts come from you. We know, God, that your intentions towards us are pure and that everything you do or allow in our space are for our best outcome. So God, help us to look to you and you alone, the Jehovah Jireh of our lives the source from which all good and perfect things come. Help us, God, to wait, to be patient. And even if it takes longer than we like, let us wait, knowing that you are mother, you are father, you are savior, you are Lord, and we can trust your gift. So we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. And thus we say, amen and amen. Again, I thank you so much for being with us. And I pray that your personal ministry is your passion. And do make Frame a part of this journey by liking, sharing, subscribing. And I'm excited to see your comments about the wisdom of children. 
and you do know my wish for you, right? It's that you and your loved ones be blessed.